book of the courses of the luminaries of heaven, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, who is their guide, showed me. And he showed me all their laws exactly as they are, and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. And this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven, and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun sets. And the moon rises and sets in these portals. And the leaders of the stars, and those whom they lead, six in the east and six in the west, and all following each other in accurately corresponding order. Also, many windows to the right and left of those portals. And first there goes forth the great luminary, named the sun, and his circumference is like the circumference of heaven, and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east, and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal, and shines in the face of heaven. In this way he rises in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth, those six portals in the east. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings, from which proceed a flame when they are open in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession, and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period, the day becomes daily longer, and the night nightly shorter, to the thirtieth morning. On that day, the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the day amounts exactly to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun rises from that fourth portal and sets in the fourth, and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings, and rises from it, and sets in the fifth portal. And then the day becomes longer by two parts, and amounts to eleven parts, and the night becomes shorter, and amounts to seven parts. And it returns to the east, and enters into the sixth portal, and rises and sets in the sixth portal one and thirty mornings, on account of its sign. On that day the day becomes longer than the night, and the day becomes double the night, and the day becomes twelve parts, and the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer. And the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal, and rises from it and sets thirty mornings. And when the thirty mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part, and becomes eleven parts, and the night seven. And the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west, and goes to the east, and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings, and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal. On that day the day decreases by two parts, and amounts to ten parts, and the night to eight parts. And the sun goes forth from that fifth portal, and sets in the fifth portal of the west, and rises in the fourth portal for one and thirty mornings on account of its sign, and sets in the west. On that day the day is equalized with the night, and becomes of equal length. And the night amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west, and returns to the east, and rises thirty mornings in the third portal, and sets in the west in the third portal. And on that day the night becomes longer than the day, and night becomes longer than night, and day shorter than day, until the thirtieth morning. And the night amounts to exactly ten parts, and the day to eight parts. And the sun rises from that third portal, and sets in the third portal in the west, and returns to the east, and for thirty mornings rises in the second portal in the east, and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night amounts to eleven parts, and the day to seven parts. And the sun rises on that day from the second portal, and sets in the west in the second portal, and returns to the east into the first portal for one and thirty mornings, and sets in the first portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night becomes longer, and amounts to the double of the day. And the night amounts exactly to twelve parts, and the day to six. 
and the sun is therewith traversed the divisions of his orbit, and turns again on those divisions of his orbit, and enters that portal thirty mornings, and also sets in the west opposite to it. And on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part, and the night has become eleven parts, and the day seven parts, and the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east, and returns on those his divisions of his orbit for thirty mornings, rising and setting. And on that day the night decreases in length, and the night amounts to ten parts, and the day to eight. And on that day the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west, and returns to the east and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings, and sets in the west of the heaven. On that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts, and the night is equal to the day, and the year is exactly as to its days three hundred and sixty-four. And the length of the day and of the night, and the shortness of the day and the night, arise through the course of the sun, these distinctions are made. So it comes that its course becomes daily longer, and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law and the course of the sun, and his return as often as he returns, sixty times and rises, the great luminary which is named the sun forever and ever. And that which thus rises is the great luminary, and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets, and decreases not, and rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal. And after this law, I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary, which is named the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of heaven, and her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind, and light is given to her in definite measure. And her rising and setting change every month, and her days are like the days of the sun. And when her light is uniform, it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun, and thus she rises. And her first phase in the east comes forth on the thirtieth morning. And on that day she becomes visible, and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day, together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises. And the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part, and her whole circumference is empty, without light, with the exception of one seventh part of it, and the fourteenth part of her light. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light, her light amounts to one seventh part, and the half thereof. And she sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with him, and receives the half of one part of light. And in the night, in the beginning of her morning, in the commencement of the lunar day, the moon sets with the sun, and is invisible that night, with the fourteen parts and the half of one of them. And she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part, and comes forth, and recedes from the rising of the sun. And in her remaining days, she becomes bright, in the remaining thirteen parts. And I saw another course, a law for her, and how, according to that law, she performs her monthly revolution. In all these, Uriel, the holy angel, who was the leader of them all, showed to me, and their positions, and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me, and I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights, till fifteen days were accomplished, in single seventh parts she accomplishes all her light in the east, and in single seventh parts she accomplishes all her darkness in the west. And in certain months she alters her settings, and in certain months she pursues her own peculiar course. In two months the moon sets with the sun, in those two middle portals, the third and the fourth. She goes forth for seven days, and turns about, and returns again through the portal where the sun rises, and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes from the sun, and in eight days enters the sixth portal, from which the sun goes forth. And when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal, she goes forth seven days, until she goes forth from the fifth, and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal, and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes and enters into the first portal in eight days, and she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal, from which the sun goes forth. Thus I saw their position, how the moons rose and the sun set in those days. 
And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of thirty days. And all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years, when they are full, amount to three hundred sixty-four days. And the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days. In five years, six days every year come to thirty days. And the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of thirty days. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly, so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. In three years there are 1,092 days, and in five years 1,820 days, so that in eight years there are 2,912 days. For the moon alone the days amount in three years to 1,062 days, and in five years she falls fifty days behind. And in years there are added 1,770 days, so that for the moon the days in eight years amount to 2,832 days, for in eight years she falls behind to the amount of eighty days, and all the days she falls behind in eight years are eighty. And the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun, which rise from the portals through which the sun rises and sets thirty days. And the leaders of the heads of the thousands who are placed over the whole creation and over all the stars have also to do with the four intercalary days being inseparable from their office according to the reckoning of the year. And these render service on the four days which are not reckoned in the reckoning of the year. And owing to them, men go wrong therein, for those luminaries truly render service on the world stations, one in the first portal, one in the third portal of the heaven, one in the fourth portal, and one in the sixth portal. And the exactness of the year is accomplished through its separate 364 stations. For the signs and the times and the years and the days the angel Uriel showed to me, whom the Lord of glory hath set forever over all the luminaries of the heaven, in the heaven and in the world, that they should rule on the face of the heaven and be seen on the earth, and be leaders for the day and the night, the sun, the moon, and stars, and all the ministering creatures which make their revolution in all the chariots of the heaven, through which the rays of the sun break forth, and from them warmth is diffused over the earth, and when they are opened at their appointed seasons, and the winds and the spirit of the dew, when they are open, standing open in the heavens at the ends. As for the twelve portals in the heaven, at the ends of the earth, out of which go forth the sun, moon, and stars, and all the works of heaven in the east and in the west, there are many windows open to the left and right of them, and one window at its appointed season produces warmth, corresponding as these do to those doors from which the stars come forth, according as he hath commanded them, and wherein they set corresponding to their number. And I saw chariots in the heaven, running in the world, above those portals in which revolve the stars that never set. And one is larger than all the rest, and it is that that makes its course through the entire world. And at the ends of the earth I saw twelve portals open to all the quarters of the heaven, from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. Three of them are open on the face of the heavens, and three in the west, and three on the right of heaven, and three on the left. And the three first are those of the east, and three are of the north, and three after those on the left, of the south, and three of the west. Through four of these come winds of blessing and prosperity, and from those eight come hurtful winds. When they are sent, they bring destruction on all the earth, and on the water upon it, and on all who dwell thereon, and on everything which is in the water and on the land. And the first wind from those portals, called the east wind, comes forth through the first portal, which is in the east, inclining towards the south. From it comes forth desolation, drought, heat and destruction and through the second portal in the middle comes what is fitting and from it there comes rain and fruitfulness and prosperity and dew and through the third portal which lies toward the north come cold and drought and after these come forth the south winds through three portals through the first portal of them inclining to the east comes forth a hot wind and through the middle portal next to it 
there come forth fragrant smells and dew and rain and prosperity and health. And through the third portal lying in the west come forth dew and rain, locusts and desolation. And after these the north winds from the seventh portal in the east come dew and rain, locusts and devastation. And from the middle portal come in a direct direction health and rain and dew and prosperity. And through the third portal in the west come cloud and hoarfrost and snow and rain and dew and locusts. And after these four are the west winds. Through the first portal adjoining the north come forth dew and hoarfrost and cold and snow and frost. And from the middle portal come forth dew and rain and prosperity and blessing. And through the last portal which adjoins the south come forth drought and desolation and burning and destruction. And the twelve portals of the four quarters of the heaven are therewith completed. And all their laws, and all their plagues, and all their benefactions I have shown to thee, my son Methuselah. And the first quarter is called the east, because it is the first. And the second, the south, because the Most High will descend there. Yea, there in quite a special sense will he who is blessed forever descend. And the west quarter is named the diminished, because there all the luminaries of heaven wane and go down. And the fourth quarter, named the north, is divided into three parts. The first of them is for the dwelling of men, and the second contains seas of water, and the abysses and forests and rivers and darkness and clouds. And the third part contains the garden of righteousness. I saw seven high mountains, higher than all the mountains which are on the earth, and thence comes forth hoarfrost, and days, seasons, and years pass away. I saw seven rivers on the earth larger than all the rivers. One of them, coming from the west, pours its waters into the great sea. And these two come from the north to the sea, and pour their waters into the Erythrean Sea in the east. And the remaining four come forth on the side of the north to their own sea, two of them to the Erythrean Sea, and two into the Great Sea, and discharge themselves there, and some say into the desert. Seven great islands I saw in the sea, and in the mainland, two in the mainland, and five in the Great Sea. And the names of the sun are the following, the first, Orjares, the second, Tomas. And the moon has four names, the first name is Esonja, the second, Ebla, the third, Benase, and the fourth, Erae. These are the two great luminaries. Their circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and the size of the circumference of both is alike. In the circumference of the sun there are seven portions of light which are added to it more than to the moon, and in definite measures it is transferred till the seventh portion of the sun is exhausted. And they set and enter the portals of the west, and make their revolution by the north, and come forth through the eastern portals on the face of the heaven. And when the moon rises one fourteenth part, it appears in the heaven, and the light becomes full in her. On the fourteenth day she accomplishes her light. And fifteen parts of light are transferred to her till the fifteenth day, when her light is accomplished. According to the sign of the year, and she becomes fifteen parts, and the moon grows by the addition of fourteen parts. And in her waning the moon decreases on the first day to fourteen parts of her light, and on the second to thirteen parts of her light, and on the third to twelve, on the fourth to eleven, on the fifth to ten, on the sixth to nine, on the seventh to eight, on the eighth to seven, on the ninth to sixth, on the tenth to five, on the eleventh to four, on the twelfth to three, on the thirteenth to two, on the fourteenth to the half of a seventh, and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the fifteenth. And in certain months the month has twenty-nine days, and once twenty-eight. And Uriel showed me another law. When light is transferred to the moon, and on which side it is transferred to her by the sun. During all the period during which the moon is growing in her light, she is transferring it to herself when opposite to the sun during fourteen days. Her light is accomplished in the heaven. And when she is illuminated throughout, her light is accomplished full in the heaven. And on the first day she is called the new moon, for on that day the light rises upon her. She becomes full moon exactly on the day when the sun sets in the west, and from the east she rises at night. 
And the moon shines the whole night through till the sun rises over against her, and the moon is seen over against the sun. On the side whence the light of the moon comes forth, there again she wanes till the light vanishes, and all the days of the month are at an end, and her circumference is empty, void of light. And three months she makes of thirty days, and at her time she makes three months of twenty-nine days each, in which she accomplishes her waning in the first period of time, and in the first portal for one hundred and seventy-seven days. And in the time of her going out she appears for three months of thirty days each, and for three months she appears of twenty-nine days each. At night she appears like a man for twenty days each time, and by day she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her light. And now, my son, I have shown thee everything, and the laws of all the stars of heaven is completed. And he showed me all the laws of these for every day, and for every season of bearing rule, and for every year, and for its going forth, and for the order prescribed to it every month and every week, and the waning of the moon which takes place in the sixth portal. For in this sixth portal her light is accomplished, and after that there is the beginning of the waning, and the waning which takes place in the first portal in its season, till one hundred and seventy-seven days are accomplished, reckoned according to weeks, twenty-five weeks and two days. She falls behind the sun in the order of the stars exactly five days in the course of one period. And when this place which thou seest has been traversed, such is the picture and sketch of every luminary which Uriel the archangel, who is their leader, showed unto me. And in those days the angel Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown thee everything, Enoch, and I have revealed everything to thee that thou shouldest see this sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars of the heaven and all those who turn them, their tasks and times and departures. And in the days of the sinners the year shall be shortened, and their seed shall be tardy in their lands and fields, and all things on the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in their time, and the rain shall be kept back, and the heaven shall withhold it, and in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time, and the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time, and the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. And in those days the sun shall be seen, and he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west, and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light. And many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed, and these shall alter their orbits and tasks, and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them. And they shall be altered from all their ways. Yea, they shall err and take them to be gods. And evil shall be multiplied upon them. And punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all.
friends, Eric Bowser here. For those of you who want to live forever and want to get on the path or the road to eternal life, just repeat this humble prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I admit that I am a sinner and I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He died on the cross for my sins. He arose three days later. He sits at the right hand of the Father. I ask him to forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save me in a day of trouble. Keep me holy and guide me with every step in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Now that's just the first step. You got to continue on. You just made a declaration before all of heaven and Satan's seen that too. So you're going to be in for a fight. He's going to try everything in his power to get you off that path. So you're going to have to learn how to fight. You're going to have to learn how to do spiritual warfare. God provided you with an excellent tool called the Bible. First thing you're going to need to do is get the real Bible. The real Bible is called Authorized King James Version. Make sure you get that Bible. And an excellent book that you can start off reading in is a book of Proverbs and a book of Psalms. Because those are very relevant books to what be going on in everyday life. And it's a lot of wisdom in those books. I really love those books. Also, you can read the Gospels. The Gospels of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came down in the flesh to show us that it can be done, and he showed us how to do it. Those are some very good examples. Although we'll never be perfect like Christ, but we are to our very best to be Christ-like. And all our weaknesses and all our flaws, we call on the name of the Lord. He can help us, and he can help us overcome our temptations because we all will be tempted. Every one of us will be tempted. But during the temptation, that's when you call on the Lord. You call on him right then and there when you're getting tempted. Because if you don't, chances are the devil knows what you like and, he, and you're going to give in to it. But, you know, you're going to fall. But every time you fall, just pick yourself back up because God mercy is there. He, God forgives, you know, all condemnation and all that. That's always coming in from the devil. But God is always ready to forgive you. But just don't play him. And don't walk on this sacrifice, you know. Don't just keep thinking you got a license to do sins over and over and over because you probably could wear out your welcome. But just always ask God to help you when you're getting tempted, you know. That's what he's there for, and you know. And on that note, have a blessed life and hope to see you in heaven. Stay on that path. God bless you.